looking for something different than a handgun, are you? Let's see if my Range Ronin Chronicles channel has something different. A Rock Island Armory M200 revolver? Nope. You need something different than that. Let's see. A Glock? Not another Glock. Here's the Ronin 4.25 inch 1911 and 9mm. Good gun. Good caliber. But you already have a 9mm 1911, you say. Wait, what's this? A Canic? A Canic Mate SFT Pro. This could prove interesting. I think you need to check this one out. Turkish gunmaker Kanik has become a rising star in the arena of budget-friendly but feature-rich 9mm semi-automatic pistols. The TP9 line hit American shores back in 2012, importing its first guns into the U.S. in partnership with Century Arms. Now, the TP9 has a new challenger in the Mete series. Okay. A full confession is in order. I have not been a huge fan of the Canic, primarily because I have not had one to fondle and shoot. The lineup just struck me at as another manufacturer attempting to cash in on the polymer pistol craze. That opinion was about to change when my son-in-law loaned me the Canic Mate SFT Pro to review. And now, I'm going to share my findings with you. So stay tuned. Let's see what 53 individual parts of the Canic Mate SFT Pro, when assembled, provides in the way of basic specifications. I'll embellish on some of these specifications and more coming up next in the feature segment. I have a lot of features to present with the Canic Mate SFT Pro. So grab your favorite adult beverage and come along for the ride. Don't worry, I'll drive. I would hate for anyone to get a ticket for VUI, viewing while intoxicated. To start this off, first, 
I was impressed with how the Canik Mate SFT Pro was packaged. The pistol comes in a hard case along with an 18 and 20 round standard capacity magazine, magazine easy loader, magwell, extra back straps, two optics plates, reversible IWB OWB holster, a Canik punch and tool kit, cleaning kit, gun lock, and manual. I am not going to bore you with the backstory of how the Canik Mute SFT Pro evolved from the original TP9 series of pistols, because I do want to begin digging into all of the features and perceived foibles of the pistol. So, let me begin with the slide assembly and work my way around after that. The slide is a highly sculptured forward styling affair that receives a Cerakote over nitride slide finish. The front of the slide, while devoid of sharp edges, is highly contoured, which provides a futuristic look while showcasing the exposed front of the externally grooved barrel that, on this version, has a 5x28 knurled end cap installed to protect the muzzle that, if desired, can be adorned with a muzzle device of your choice. Deeply cut and widely spaced grooves adorn the front of the slide that provide an excellent gripping surface. On each side of the slide, in the middle of the cocking serrations, are lightning cuts. The rear slide grooves are a bit more subtle, but still provide a gripping surface that most would find adequate. The front slide grooves are carried over to the top of the slide where you will also find a lightning cut that exposes a grooved barrel. More on the barrel in a bit. The chamber of the barrel, seemingly, has an inspection port for checking to see if a round is chambered. But this inspection port is actually used as a channel for a tactile, round-chambered indicator that raises when a round is chambered. Just rearward of the round chamber indicator, Here's the removable optic sight lid, as Canik calls it, which is mounted with two T10 Torx screws. Two interface plates come with the pistol, one for the shield and the Mechanic M01 optic, and the second for the shield RMFC and Mechanic M01 optic, according to Canik. Sitting atop the slide is, of course, a set of sights. Front sight is a tritium unit that is prominent and aligns well with the serrated blank face of the rear sight. The rear sight has a squared off front that can be used for cocking the pistol using a hard surface. At the rear of the slide, and taking a cue from Springfield Army XD series of pistols, is an end cap with a hole for a striker status indicator that, when the pistol is in the cock condition, the end of the striker protrudes through the hole and can be readily seen by the operator. On the right side of the slide, and just forward of the ejection port, is the word PRO, with 9 by 19 displayed just below that. The ejection port is cut wide and deep to ensure ridding of spent shells out and away from the pistol, which the pistol does quite well. Just behind the ejection port is the external extractor that, as with the internal ejector, plays a major role in removing expended shell casings. Overall, the slide is the heavy part of the pistol and weighs in at 1 pound 0.9 ounces which is around 91.5% of the total unloaded weight of the pistol. Internal to the slide is, of course, the barrel, and quite the barrel it is. Finely cut and grooved, the barrel is a thing of beauty and functionality. The barrel is of the lengthless type that is common with most pistols, except for the 1911 that uses a swing link and double camming surface to lock and unlock the barrel. The slanted grooves of the chamber area gives a nice aesthetic touch to the pistol with a highly polished ridges and contrasting brush finished flats. The recoil spring and guide rod is of the single captivated type 
and rest in the hollow of the barrel when installed. With the version of the Canik Mate SFT Pro that I am reviewing, the end cap must be removed from the muzzle to remove the barrel from the slide. Looking at the inside of the slide, you can see the impeccable workmanship, both from the machining side and the human side. I believe it's time to move on to the frame. The frame is a full-size affair that is highly ergonomic and is sculptured in all the right places. While I really have no use for an under rail, one is present, well integrated, and cut to Picatinny rail specifications for mounting lights, lasers, or combinations of both. Just to the rear of the under rail are textured areas on both sides of the pistol for resting the thumb of the support hand, should you decide to do so. Just to the rear of the textured area is the takedown assembly, the lever of which resides on both sides of the pistol and operates the same as that found on a Glock pistol, but with a better size and texture to accommodate ease of disassembling the pistol. A slide lock lever is found on both sides of the pistol and reachable by the thumb of both hands regardless of if you are a right hand or a left handed operator. Next comes the trigger guard. The trigger guard is squared off and serrated for those who like to place an index finger on it during shooting. There is adequate space in front of the trigger, which I will talk about shortly, to accommodate gloved hands. The trigger housing is nicely undercut at the rear to allow for as high a hold as possible on the grip. No thumb or grip safety is present. The grip area is nicely textured on the front and sides of the pistol. It comes with two grip adapters that can be swapped to better fit the grip to the hand. Each grip adapter is mildly textured, but textured just enough to not feel obtrusive to the palm of the shooting hand. A single pin that can be removed and installed using the provided punch allows the swapping of the adapters. The adapter that came mounted in the pistol makes the grip feel very nice in my hand. Because this pistol is a loner, I did not want to change the adapters out. Not that I needed to. The rear of the grip is nicely arched and conforms well with the palm of my hand. The grip length allows me to get all of my support digits around the handle and is thick enough to get the palm of my support hand firmly against the grip without crushing the fingers of my shooting hand in the process. At the bottom of the grip is a highly flared removable magwell extension that not only makes magazine changes very quick, but also prevents the hand from sliding down the grip under dry or wet conditions. The magwell extension appears to be made of aluminum that has also received the Cerakote over nitride finish. No finger grooves are present on the grip and you can get your hand as high as possible on the grip without discomfort or worrying about slide bite. There's a very nice beaver tail prevents the hand from riding up far enough to get slide bite. The beaver tail nestles nicely into the web of the shooting hand. The magwell extension, as mentioned, can be removed as it is held into place with a single hex head screw. A hex head wrench to remove the screw is not provided with the pistol, however, the Canik Mate SFT Pro comes with two metal staggered magazines, one that holds 18 rounds and one that holds 20 rounds of ammunition. The magazines are proprietary and seem to be of good material and function. I'll find out how well during the range session. Both magazines can be disassembled for maintenance. The magazine catch and release button is prominent on the left side of the frame can be moved to the right side for lefty operators. The area just above the magazine catch and release button is relieved on both sides of the pistol and serves as a nice place to rest the thumb and trigger finger. The grip, overall, is one of the best that I have held, having both enough texture and fit for my hand. It's positive and gritty, but not so much that it wears on my hands over time. The texturing is only on the side panels and the front. 
backstrap merely features raised bumps with a pronounced hump. Finally, I am going to talk about the trigger, and what a fine trigger it is. The trigger paddle is straight, made of polymer, and incorporates the now usual trigger safety lever that prevents the striker from releasing if not fully pressed with the trigger. The trigger pull weight on this example comes in at 2 pounds 13.6 ounces with a 5 pull average. I found the trigger to be outstanding, especially in a production gun. There is about a quarter inch of light but noticeable take up. After that, you are basically at the wall and the brake is crisp and clean. The reset is just an eighth of an inch, positive and fast. There is no pronounced brake per se, as there is on many pistols. The striker releases so cleanly that you cannot feel it release. There is no push through a wall, as I experienced with most triggers. It took me a while dry firing the pistol to start being accustomed to the trigger. Well, I think that I have said all that needs to be said about the features of the pistol. It thinks that it is time to go quickly through the maintenance aspect of the Canik Mate SFT Pro. Performing maintenance on the Canik Mate SFT Pro is no different from any other striker fired pistol and consists of the usual safety check, field stripping, inspection, lubrication, assembly, and function check. Before I get to field stripping the pistol, let me show that the pistol is empty and safe to do so. Removing the magazine is the first step. Locking the slide to the rear follows. Now to physically and visually inspect the pistol to ensure that it is empty and that no ammunition is present in the immediate vicinity. Field stripping of the Canik almost mirrors that of field stripping the Glock pistol, only better. If the barrel has an end cap, remove it using the provided wrench. I suggest using a piece of cloth or something to cover the cap to prevent scratching it with the wrench, but I leave that up to you. If you have a muzzle device installed, it should be obvious that it needs to be removed. Pull the slide to the rear slightly to take pressure off of the takedown assembly. Pull the takedown assembly down from both sides. This is easy since the takedown assembly has wide textured points to grab. Slowly, let the slide go forward until it stops. Pull the trigger. Move the slide forward slightly and lift the slide up and off of the frame. Turn the slide upside down and remove the captivated guide rod assembly. Finally, remove the barrel. The pistol is now ready for cleaning, inspection, and lubrication, for which I'll simply steer you in the direction of the owner's manual, which has the necessary information on cleaning, inspecting, and lubricating the pistol. To assemble the pistol, start by installing the barrel and ensuring that it is locked into place within the slide. Install the captivated guide rod while ensuring that it is properly seated in the barrel. Assemble the slide and frame. This is done by lining up the slide grooves with the frame and then pressing the slide into place. Move the slide to the rear and cycle the slide several times to ensure proper slide operation. Next, I'll perform a function check. As I have mentioned in all of my firearm reviews, I use snap caps for checking extraction, ejection, and locking back of the slide on an empty magazine. The snap caps buffer the striker when it is released, thus protecting the striker and striker stop. 
Install one snap cap into a magazine and insert the magazine into the pistol. Attempt to pull the trigger without pressing the trigger safety lever. The striker should not release. Pull the trigger while fully pressing the trigger safety lever. The striker will release. Cycle the slide fully. The snap cap should be extracted and ejected and the slide should lock back on the empty magazine. Now, I believe it is time that the Canik Mate SFT Pro see some range time. Before we get to the range, however, there is one thing left to do. If you are not going to attach a muzzle device at this time, you should install the barrel end cap to protect the threads. Simply screw the barrel end cap onto the muzzle and tighten it with the provided wrench. As with removing the end cap, you may want to place a cloth between the wrench and the end cap when tightening to keep the wrench from marring the end cap. I always look forward to a day at the range. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to shoot until I ponder a bit. Today is the Canik Mate SFT Pro. So, come along with me while I spend some quality range time for the first time with the Canik. Today's fodder is some Remington 124 grain FMJ, a tad of Magtech 115 grain FMJ, and a sprinkling of my favorite 9mm defense ammunition, Sig Sauer 147 grain jacketed hollow point. I'll note in this segment what ammunition is being used at what point. To start with, and as I mentioned in the features segment, the trigger is excellent. Pull it to the wall, hold it while ensuring the sights are lined up, hold just a short bit and presto boomo, hold it flight takes place. Warming up a bit at the beginning, I quickly moved into my favorite Mozambique drills. What a pleasure it is running this drill with the Canik Mate SFT Pro. As was said in the old Timex watch commercials, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. The Canik Mate SFT Pro is just a pistol that you want to spend more time with. It is highly accurate and reliable. The grip feels excellent in the hand. The perceived recoil is mild and muzzle flip is minimal. It really made me want to push this pistol a bit, but there is a speed limit at the range. Therefore, double taps during the Mozambique drills had to be faced on the conservative side. So, sit back and simply observe the rest of the range session.
Just to recap the rain session a bit, the sights are excellent. The tritium front sight was easy to center and be seen in the notch rear sight. The Canic has an excellent trigger, but a bit touchy. I could not tell when the striker was going to fall, and that caused me to rush my shots a bit. The grip feels good in the hand. My hand conformed to it nicely with plenty of space for the sport hand to get a full grip. The grip texture is excellent, not too harsh and not too mild. The Canic SFT Pro has excellent combat accuracy. It is much more accurate than my work with it on this day. The pistol is 100% reliable. No feed, extraction, or other mishaps occurred during the range session. Shooting left was my issue, not the pistol. As I mentioned, I might have been trying to rush my shots due to a different trigger than I am used to. That may have caused my pulling slightly left when shooting. In general, I am pleased with the performance of the Canic SFT Pro, but not so pleased with my performance with it. More trigger time, for me at least, is needed. But you just might be blowing out the center ring when you shoot it. The Canic SFT Pro would be an excellent carry, competition, or home defense firearm. When loaded with 18 rounds of 6 hour 147 grain JHP, the Matei SFT Pro weighs in at 2 pounds 2.49 ounces. With 20 rounds of the same ammunition installed, the weight increases to 2 pounds 6.4 ounces. By comparison, the Canic Matei SFT Pro outweighs a fully loaded Glock G17 by approximately 3.6 ounces both of which are full-size service pistols and can be, for some, a challenge to carry, let alone concealed. Some, like me, considered a challenge to carry concealed. Surprisingly, Canic would help me out with that. Canic includes a holster with the Matei SFT Pro that can be modified for IWB or OWB carry. While I did not want to do a holster review, this holster needs some addressing. The holster is shipped, set up for OWB carry, and due to the neutral cant, could be worn in any position on the body, strong side or cross draw. I am not going to include appendix carry, because with a 5 inch barreled pistol, the holster would be highly sticking into your personal business when seated, if you know what I mean. Let's say that you are like me and prefer IWB carry. No problem. A Phillips head screwdriver is all that is needed. Simply remove the screws from their mounts. Take off the holster mounting clips. Remove the anchor nuts. Insert them on the other side of the holster. Position the clips over the anchor nuts. Attach the screws. Now you have an IWB holster.
note that there is also no means for adjusting the depth of the holster within the pants. The holster is made from Kydex, while the mounting clips are polymer and are flexible enough to easily slip over a gun belt. The holster has a tensioning screw, but the holster securely held the pistol without any adjustment of this tensioning screw. The holster is contoured so that it fits around the body and with a bit of locating the holster in various places, a sweet spot can be found where the holster feels good on the body. I tried the holster IWB strong side behind the hip and in a cross draw position. Both positions seem to work well. In the cross draw position, the holster position is like that of a low vertical shoulder holster. This position requires a stiff belt to keep the holster snug against the body. While the neutral cant was acceptable, a bit more forward cant would hide the butt of the pistol better. In cool or colder weather, I would have no problem with carrying in the cross draw position, given I had enough outer garments to help keep printing down. The butt of this pistol, like that of Kim Kardashian and JLo, is hard to hide regardless of how much clothing is used to cover it. Overall, however, the holster is a fine product, is easy to attach to the belt, and does a good job of fully protecting and securing the firearm. What many American users of Kantec products might not be aware of is that the factory in which Kantec pistols are made is not just a gun company. The facility is NATO approved and which manufactures numerous types of military hardware under ISO 9000 requirements. This means that the organization must meet a set of five quality management system standards that help to ensure they meet customer and other stakeholder needs within statutory and regulatory requirements related to a product or service. The Canik SFT Pro has both pros and cons, as does any firearm. On the pro side, I'm going to begin with, it has a great trigger. I like the flat trigger face and serrated trigger safety lever. And I like the fact that the trigger brake is clean and crisp. It is reliable and accurate. It proved that to me at the range. It is affordable for most everyday citizens that are looking for a high quality pistol. It has good general ergonomics. It does not feel out of place in the hand. Two magazines are provided with the pistol an 18 round and a 20 round. You get a lot of extras, including a decent holster that can be set up for OWB or IWB carry. It has good grip texture. The texture is mild, but provides an adequate gripping surface. It has a flared magwell extension that can be removed or left installed. It incorporates good controls. The ambidextrous slide stop is a plus. It has a modular design with internal takedown pins that can be easily removed with a provided punch. There is a simple sighting system with a single Trijicon front sight and plain rear sight. On the con side, we have the fact that it is big for concealed carry. At around 2 pounds 6.4 ounces fully loaded, it is a bit on the heavy side. Replacing the sights may require Canic specific options. Although the front serrations are more than adequate, it does have somewhat shallow rear slide serrations. The slide stop is somewhat thin and takes quite a bit of effort to release the slide. The final point of the cons is that it's not made in America. Overall, I give the Canik SFT Pro high marks. 
Thanksgiving that the pistol has many more pros than cons. I mentioned in the first part of this review that this pistol is on loan from my son-in-law. If I purchased a Canik to have in the stable, I would no doubt go for the SFT without the barrel adapter and 4.62 inch barrel, or the SFX with a 5.2 inch barrel. Either one would do the job, and both are optics ready, should I be ready for optics. Well, my friends, once again I have come to the end of another story. I hope that you can join me later for more gun and gear reviews when they are published. Until we meet again, stay safe out there.